Okay, welcome back everybody. Our next talk is going to be Adam Stroll talking about 18 systems and how they use FreeBSD. So I'm going to turn it over to Adam. Hey, John, thanks. <laughs> All right, let's get my screen shared here. Uh, thanks for joining everyone. Uh, my name is Adam Stroll. I am the president and operations director over at A-Team Systems. Um, we are a FreeBSD shop that does a lot of Linux. <laughs> um, we're going to run through uh, this talk and hopefully I've timed it so that we do have some time for QA at the end. <laughs> we'll see. Um, so A-Team Systems uh, in its current iteration was founded in 2006, uh, but really I've been using FreeBSD personally since the very early 90s. Um, I've done some more than my fair share of FTP installs over a 28.8 baud modem, which is where you download that floppy image, uh, 1.4 megabytes, and then the installer downloads the rest. Um, overall, uh, most, actually all of us here currently on the technical side um, have a very similar experience with FreeBSD. We've been using it for decades. Um, it is the joke why we say we are a FreeBSD shop that also does Linux. Um, we love FreeBSD, uh, however, by volume, it doesn't make up the majority of the servers that we manage. It does make up the majority of the critical implementations and uh, especially in high availability uh, storage, that sort of thing. Um, so I think we're in a unique position to kind of see, yeah, maybe even sometimes the same uh, solution uh, just under a different operating system. And it's given us a very unique uh, perspective on FreeBSD. Uh, and I think it is one reason why we are fairly opinionated about our support for FreeBSD. Uh, however, um, and this talk is an opinionated talk. However, uh, you know, like anything, it doesn't do everything well. And there are, uh, you know, cases where uh, something else, Linux uh, generally, uh, is going to do better. Uh, and this talk, the goal of this talk is to help weigh the pros and cons of using FreeBSD in production as someone who wants to promote the project in their professional um, life or, you know, so within your organization or to your customers. Um, I call it day-to-day -day evangelism uh, for the project. Um, so again, this is definitely an opinionated piece. Uh, I'm going to just try to give you know, my reasons and my experience uh, so that you may take them and uh, either use them to inspire you to, towards more relevant uh, evangelism um, or, you know, maybe learn some lessons from the lessons that I learned. <laughs> um, we all know that FreeBSD is capable of great things, but again, sometimes uh, there are better solutions technically uh, or politically or other reasons and making the right call uh, on that is not only important for you, your career, your organization, but also uh, how the project is viewed within uh, both the technical community by your peers and um, you know the general public, you know, and customers, and uh, you know, be them internal or external. And that's kind of the the gist of this talk. So I hope it doesn't come across too preachy. Um, so the first. Uh, Thing we'll dive into is uh, when to use FreeBSD again, um, you know, under our experience. And you may guess that, you know, a lot of our implementations are very web centric. It's just kind of the nature of the business we deal with. Uh, we do do a lot of public uh, front edge uh, security posture style deployment. So web stacks are a disproportionate amount of what we deal with. So it is slanted towards that. Um, but I think this, uh, a lot of these reasons are uh, you know, fairly agnostic and I hope the talk is uh, as well. So when to use FreeBSD? Um, the bar is, is pretty low, uh, you know, to start out with when you're starting to add things into that, hey, should I use it column? Um, and yet, yeah, does it do the thing as well or better than, you know, the alternative Linux uh, generally? Um, better yet, does it offer a unique advantage? 
Um, and we'll talk about some of these uh, in, in the next couple slides, as well as uh, what A-Team Systems considers unique advantages too. Um, but a lot of these technologies you're already probably familiar with, uh, things like ZFS or CARP. Um, yeah, does it do something that Linux simply can't do? And I know uh, Linux has ZFS and actually we support it in a lot of places. Um, but uh, I, don't know, I think FreeBSD still has got the, uh, the home court advantage on there, although that I think is um, you know, changing, which is great. Um, I think more people need to use ZFS. <laughs> um, but there are still things like CARB uh, and a couple other technologies that there is just no, there's no matching. Um, so. Um, so yeah, unique advantages, that's definitely going to be a huge, you know, in our view, a huge weight in the, uh, scale there for yes, use FreeBSD. Um, another one is, you know, kind of ties into the first one. You're not the only one doing it. Um, and again, I would just, I'm going to qualify a lot of these slides and items. Again, this is for professional deployment. You're just trying to get your job done. You've been asked for a thing you know, you have a fixed amount of time to do it. Um, if this is not a don't do, re this is not a don't do an exploratory, don't, you know, do innovative things with FreeBSD. This is very much like you're just trying to get your job done, but also uh, get FreeBSD out there. So again, making sure you've got people to talk to about the deployment, or if someone else has to maintain it, um, they can get support too, that I consider to be fairly important. Uh, infrastructure compatibility, you know, in the day and age of virtualization, uh, we're not uh, as constrained by this as we were certainly in the early 90s. I think also there's been a general narrowing of hardware overall, especially in the server environment, um, as well as an expansion of support. You know, back in the day, you really had to pay attention to those SaaS controllers, which is something we still do too, if you're rolling out on physical hardware. Um, but uh, it's not as bad as it once was. Um, and, you know, knock on wood, we've been pretty lucky too with uh, customers coming to us with hardware they've already purchased. Um, it's definitely not like it was even 10 years ago. Um, and then, of course, with virtualization, uh, you know, FreeBSD runs under basically everything. Um, so you're good, but, you know, just again, make sure that there's nothing exotic going on or you're missing some crucial feature um, or support. Um, because that's maybe not the, the time to use FreeBSD. Uh, and the kind of final item I do want to touch on is licensing. Uh, that BSD license is, um, it's hard to beat. And we'll touch on that a little bit more uh, in a second. So this is not an exhaustive list. And again, you can probably see how colored this is by our uh, web stack experience. Um, However, uh, you know, these are the things that, you know, we, we see as, um, you know, on a day-to-day -day basis that it does well. Uh, and we support a lot of places, obviously that, that, uh, FAMP stack or FreeBSD, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> uh, PHP, you know, agnostic stack is great. Uh, high level languages like PHP and Python, uh, are, are going to do great. Um, because yeah, the whole point of them is they abstract everything out. Uh, there are abstractions built on abstractions. The developers aren't gonna care. PHP is PHP, Python is Python. Um, you start getting into Java, Java, um, I'll just spare you my color commentary on it, but let's just say that it has still yet to realize it's uh, right once run everywhere dream. I think that is less to do though with the platform and more to do with just the nature of that beast. So I did not put an asterisk by it, even though like anything, you wanna make sure that, yeah, it's gonna run under open JDK or JRE, um, which is basically what you're gonna be running under uh, FreeBSD uh, in our experience. Uh, but uh, we've had good, good results with it. Um, and again, I, I kind of group it in with those three. Uh, Node.js does run. Uh, I know the FreeBSD support for that and the port maintainers um, are definitely uh, on it. <laughs> um, however, I am going to qualify that uh, and I'll talk a little bit why uh, in a later slide. Um, but again, at a conceptual level, these high lang languages are going to do great. And you know, your developers are not going to care. Your customers aren't going to care um, that it's on FreeBSD versus Linux. 
Um, and that's not really, you know, again, where the, the bar is in terms of doing something great, but getting your high level language on there with your, you know, database engine of choice, you can see here is going to then give you the advantage of ZFS with LZ4 compression, uh, you know, three to one, uh, that's, that's what you're kind of setting yourself up for. Um, you're making sure that you're getting those advantages without uh, any of the disadvantages. And again, these kind of technologies um, or these technologies deliver that and we, and we deliver it to our customers. Um, shell scripts, obviously fairly agnostic uh, and C and C++ as well. You know, as long as you're not doing kernel, you know, interfaces uh, and, you know, system specific stuff, uh, you know, I personally have ported a number of things to FreeBSD. It is why I'm actually in the contributors list from the, you know, mid nineties. Um, I haven't done that in a while, but um, yeah, it's, it's fairly straightforward and hey, we've got GMake too. So you can compile those things uh, that were running under Linux or Solaris or whatever. Um, and uh, I did a lot of porting uh, from Solaris to FreeBSD for a customer, but um, yeah, it, it's, it's gonna work. And again, you know, it's, it's not necessarily that, oh, this just works, it's it works. And then you get to take advantage of these great things um, that we'll talk about um, for, uh, for FreeBSD in that environment. Um, we'll just run through, you know, these database engines. Look, these are the common ones we run into. I'm sure there are more. Um, and again, I touched on that LZ4 compression under ZFS. Um, I will mention one thing that some may not be really obvious. Uh, LZ4 compression is great for saving space, but that's actually not the biggest reason that we run it. Um, when you have a, for example, three to one compression ratio on your MySQL uh, disk backend, yes, that means you can store my, more MySQL data on your ZFS volume. But what it really means to us is a 3x throughput <laughs> increase because you're getting that uh, compression as effectively uh, a, a multiplication effect on your, uh, on your IO. Um, and that is a very unique advantage uh, to, uh, to these kinds of setups. Again, we actually haven't vetted that, see how that works under Linux yet. So I can't, I'm not gonna quite put that under a unique advantage anymore, but um, again, something to take into account. And then general use cases, uh, you know, servers, that good stuff. FreeBSD is great under those situations. Uh, I'm not gonna get too much into legalese here, but let's just say the BSD license is the license to, uh, to, to uh, try to beat, uh, especially if you're making a product that you're going to be bundling up and selling, or there's a potential down the road you want to do that. Um, so if you're making an internal tool, licensing maybe isn't really the most relevant thing. Uh, however, if you are thinking about, yeah, if this tool is really good and I might want to sell this, uh, then yeah, that BSD license uh, is going to be a, a game changer for you. Um, you know, not having to risk uh, either doing extreme code firewalling uh, to avoid GPL entanglements um, or, you know, again, the ability to fully customize the OS, uh, I think is a very powerful argument uh, that maybe doesn't apply to a lot of us in our day-to-day -day implementation. Uh, I know there's a lot of vendors here. So, you know, I know Juniper, et cetera, all do that. Um, but, uh, you know, I think the appeal for that can be maybe even broader than that though, uh, especially if, um, yeah, you're thinking about, you know, turning your solution into, uh, you know, a distribution of some kind. So, Let's touch, touch on, you know, that's the easy part. I think we all know, you know, especially for our own use cases where FreeBSD shines um, and, and how to, you know, encourage it. Um, I think for me, my biggest uh, difficulty, you know, as a young sysadmin in my late teens, early twenties um, was knowing when not to use it. Um, and again, this is under the scope of you're at work or you're doing this for a customer um, and you know you can't color too far outside the lines here. <laughs> um, and so the first kind of item for that is gonna be, you know, the first warning sign, and this is a big one that we check for is you're not a fringe use case. And what do fringe use cases look like? Um, a lagging port, 
you know, that it's been updated, but not recently. And it's a, you know, a major and two minor versions behind, uh, or it's just unmaintained at all. Um, that being said, we definitely have a number of unmaintained or laggy ports uh, in uh, a lot of production environments. So take it with a grain of salt, but know what you're getting into. Um, you know, and kind of just, if you're going to roll something out, don't just see that it's on the port tree, make sure that it is um, supported uh, by someone or, or it's going to be you, um, which is an acceptable answer, but again, know what you're getting into. Um, because it may have implications for your customer or, you know, your own time, which your, uh, you know, team may <laughs> want to know about ahead of time. Uh, what else does a fringe use case look like? I uh, touched on this, but, you know, do a little searching. Uh, make sure you're not the only one actually doing this just because there's a well-maintained port does not mean that, uh, you know, you're kind of, uh, you've got company. Um, and again, you know, we all do uh exploratories and blaze some trails. But um, again, I'm just kind of doing this talk under the purview of uh, you're just trying to get something done. And while you're trying to get something done, you're trying to get some free BSD in there to get its advantages and you know, making sure that you've got, again, someone that you can reach out to or uh, a deep well of uh, support mailing lists to search through, et cetera, is uh, important uh, when you're doing something professionally, in my view. Uh, I am going to tap in here on that star that I put by Node.js real quick. Um, one thing to chase down for that specifically is its dependencies. Uh, the NPM kind of marketplace is a rich tapestry of dependencies upon dependencies upon dependencies that can be more or less impossible when uh, your developers uh, potentially are using frameworks and they're just in including things that include things that include things. It's not reasonable to look at a package.json or a manifest and understand what it is actually going to include. Um, it is an argument for a POC and I touch on that later. However, if you are running because of that, we have in our experience found that there are definitely a lot of little projects that much bigger mainstream projects and frameworks tap into that just the maintainer just is not aware of FreeBSD. So for us personally, if you're using Node.js as an app application engine, um, we don't recommend FreeBSD currently because of that. Um, that's again, just the get it done mode. I would say the caveat or the qualification of that is yeah, but do a POC, but again, even with a POC, remember your developers may need to add other packages to you know, your product or project as they evolve and you don't want to be pinched by that. Um, they're just trying to roll out a new feature and all of a sudden you've got you know, some fifth level dependency that simply will not compile under FreeBSD and you're trying to get a hold of the person that maintains this who clearly just runs Ubuntu. So for us, we typically avoid actual Node.js applications on FreeBSD uh, because of that risk. Um, we've been burned by it before, so we are a little shy of it. That being said, uh, if you're using you know, NPM to install PHP modules or build you know, JS applications, we've had pretty good luck with that. And uh, you know, knock on wood, have never had to you know, bail on anything because of that. So. Node.js, because of its rich uh, tapestry of, of dependencies, is a fairly unique on that. So again, just kind of look down the path on that, though. That's my, my advice. Um, I'll try to go through the rest of these because I think they're fairly straightforward. Um, that's, that was the big one, that fringe use case, though. Uh, vendor support and certified OSs. If you're using a commercial piece of software or you know, a piece of software that has official support, Make sure that not only that it has a FreeBSD version, but that it's updated again, you know, just like a port, it's not lagging behind, you know, oh, we've got a FreeBSD version, but you look at it and it's version 10. That's, you probably don't want to be rolling that out, you know, in a production environment that you're professionally supporting. Um, and again, if it's not on the vendors, you know, hey, we'll support this matrix, then yeah, it's probably not a good choice. Um, Another reason not to use it is uh, you're out on a limb politically. And 
you know, you may think, oh uh, yeah, you know, the, my CTO or some higher up or the customer really just wants Linux. And that is, you know, that skepticism is something that, you know, can be there. And, but as long as it's not um, toxic, where you're getting the impression that anything, anything that goes wrong with this implementation, which of course, hey, the implementations have issues, um, is going to be, uh, you know, oh, it's because it's free BSD. As long as you're not getting that vibe, you know, I think skepticism can be overcome, and that's, you know, the evangelism that you know we all do, uh, you know, when we're trying to, you know, put free BSD into production. I think the the underlying or the uh, kind of un, uh, underappreciated uh, political uh, limbs are more like your coworkers potentially. You know, do they have FreeBSD experience? Are they going to be tapped to support this too? Uh, if you're on vacation or they're on call, and uh, you know, if they are, make sure that this is you know something they've got time for or interest for, and you've provided documentation for. Um, I think that's a crucial one for us is, um, you know, making sure you get buy-in and bring other people along for the ride, you know, willingly and are not uh, generating resentment because they're now supporting this thing that they just don't know how to support because they don't know FreeBSD. So again, you know, weigh that when you're about to roll something out. Um, desktop and graphical environments. I have a whole spiel for this, but we are running a little behind. My take, again, I've qualified this as an opinionated talk, is that FreeBSD is a server environment. Uh, don't run it as a desktop. And again, this is under the purview of production at work professionally. Um, there are better solutions, in my view, and, and, and better projects that have that desktop GUI uh, support as a priority. Uh, and then the last thing is, again, I touched on this with, you know, infrastructure, but yeah, just make sure that, um, you know, if you are about to buy some hardware or the customer is, you've got some control over it and that it's going to line up. Uh, and if it doesn't, don't, you know, don't blaze a trail with hardware purchasing. Uh, that can lead to a bummer <laughs> and you eventually having to install Linux. So. Um, this last uh, slide in terms of, you know, when, when not to use FreeBSD is, uh, again, something that it took me a long time to learn <laughs> as a young, as a young sysadmin in my teens and early twenties. Um, kind of the, the gist of this is know your audience and what they value when you are trying to do that evangelism. Um, you know, the average person that's just, you know, for us, we, we do a lot of single, uh, web servers and a lot of high availability web uh, clusters. And, you know, there's stuff that our end customers who are generally either developers or, you know, startup executives of some kind or, uh, you know, business people, you know, on the business development or product management side, you know, there are things that they're interested in and there are things that they're not interested in. Um, in this slide's example, the networking stack, uh, you know, probably isn't applicable to someone um, or interesting to someone who's just trying to get a web server up to sell, you know, tires or whatever. Uh, on the other hand, uh, if you're looking at a large deployment, um, you know, being able to cut your server count and thus infrastructure costs by a third because of FreeBSD's better density uh, may actually be a good argument. Um, and uh, yeah, that's the uh, that's the funny slide to keep you guys awake. Um, you, are you all awake? Um, all right, so you've decided to use FreeBSD, you've weighed it out. Um, again, this is a more agnostic, this is nothing specific to FreeBSD in my view, but uh, again, under the purview of, hey, you know, you put FreeBSD out there, uh, this is going to not just reflect on you, but also the project. Um, so here's some suggestions uh, from me to, uh, to make FreeBSD uh, or, or, or to give FreeBSD a better chance of success here. Uh, proof of concepts, I cannot stress this enough. Um, yes, if you're doing a PHP MySQL stack, you probably don't need to do a POC. Uh, but yeah, if you're going to do some uh, Node.js or NPM-based uh, stuff um, or a uh, you know, more involved uh, application stack, a proof of concept is a great thing. And uh, 
you know, I don't want to encourage people to have a poor work-life balance, but sometimes if you want to get free BSD in there, what we will do is uh, we'll take some time on our own and test it out off to the side. Um, and, you know, I, I view that personally as time contributed to the project. Um, so set up dev UAT and uh, staging in UAT and production environments. If you're going to put FreeBSD in production, do it the whole way through and uh, give your developers a fighting chance, <laughs> you know, and make sure that everything's lined up. Um, that has, lack of that has caused a lot of problems in our experience and um, having it is invaluable. Um, aggressive and deep monitoring. Um, I think I'm getting the, uh, the ax here. Uh, oh, no, that's uh, someone chat here. I'm gonna try to speed through this. Um, aggressive and deep infrastructure monitoring is something we really pride ourselves um, at A Team Systems uh, for doing. And uh, again, you know, having that uh, that extra vision can sometimes help save uh, save a deployment. And again, in that case, you're saving FreeBSD in this specific place. Uh, APM falls under that category too. Uh, having it is invaluable in our view. Um, we're going to try to go through some specific reasons here fairly quickly on why a team uses FreeBSD, and hopefully I've got enough time for some uh, Q&A here. So I know I've already touched on two of these. Uh, CARP, it's hard, it's hard to pick a specific order here, but CARP is actually great. It lets you basically make uh, anything uh, highly available at the IP level. That's awesome for things like load balancers and firewalls. Um, and there is no substitute for that in a lot of places. Um, ZFS, uh, I think we all know how awesome ZFS is. Yes, there is ZFS on Linux. It is, it seems to be good. I don't know that I would personally put it in production, although we do maintain it in production for customers. Um, but again, I think uh, ZFS on FreeBSD has the, that home court advantage, that stability and that, uh, that history and that confidence to put it into production uh, without hesitation. Jails, uh, hey, zero overhead uh, you know, containerization. I don't wanna say virtualization, but you know, zero overhead isolation. Uh, we use it a lot. And when we need more or we need more uh, or harder resource capping, there's Beehive. Uh, and Beehive is great for FreeBSD VMs as well as Linux. Uh, we do do a fair amount of that. Uh, sometimes we just, we can do everything in FreeBSD and it makes sense, but we've got one thing that needs to be Linux or again is going to be better supported under Linux. And yeah, that's uh, Beehive Jail is going to do great there. Uh, we even have run it in uh, with Windows 10 uh, for a number of years uh, here internally um, at 18 Systems. Uh, we have actually finally migrated that, uh, that one thing onto a proper physical server, but it does work. Uh, PF, it's not OpenBSD's PF, but in my view, uh, it is definitely better than IPFW and IP tables. Uh, multiple routing table support. It seems like a weird one, but man, has it saved a lot of implementations or prevented us from having to uh, tell a customer, okay, you've got two servers, we're going to have to make this four because you, you need multiple routing tables. Um, it is one of those uh, hat tricks or rabbit out of a hat that we can pull. That is great. And the last thing um, on the technical side that I'm going to talk about is uh, it's booting and partitioning. And this is something we repeatedly run into and leverage uh, that it has a very clear advantage over Linux in our view. You can format, you can partition and format a volume UFS, ZFS, whatever the actual uh, file system is, and literally CP-RP free PSD OS onto it, and it will just boot. And we leverage that to go between VMs on cloud providers to jails to Beehive VMs to physical hardware from a physical, from a jail to a physical hardware. We do this shuffling on a very regular basis and compared to Linux, which is very complicated, and I would use the word brittle um, in its booting process. Um, it is night and day, and that really, in a lot of cases, lets us roll out physical infrastructure that has a much better um, 
ROI uh, and value and while retaining the flexibility of, okay, yeah, hey, in six months or three months, if this server outgrows its you know, storage volume, we can provision another machine off to the side and R sync over to it while it's running. <laughs> and that is a, is a great amount of flexibility that FreeBSD uh, provides that is unmatched in my view uh, by anything else. And the last part here is our feelings. Um, FreeBSD is an awesome project. In our view, it is driven by, sorry, I keep reading the chat here, unfortunately. It is driven by the motivation of being stable. Uh, and that's not just on a technical side, it's the project itself is stable. A-team systems can build solutions on it and, uh, and upgrade to 12, two to 13 and not have to reinvent the wheel. Uh, doing Linux major version upgrades, there is a lot of work that is typically involved in them and, uh, and on a level that uh, FreeBSD just does not see. Um, and that TCO or total cost of ownership on our end uh, is something that is very stark um, because we do so much of both um, and we maintain and support so many uh, Linux and FreeBSD instances. Um, that stability is, you know, they say culture comes from the top down, and that is a, a massive thing for us um, and will keep us using FreeBSD into the future um, because it, it clearly guides everything the project does. Um, and yeah, being a server, of, I think, first OS in our view um, means that it's not being pulled in a lot of other directions the way Linux is, for example. You know, they do have to consider desktop users, peripheral support, et cetera, um, in a way that, look, I'm not saying you can't do these things with FreeBSD, but they, it's not the focus. And when there is, um, you know, a feature expansion for the, those use cases, I think they are fairly weighed uh, under the scope of, uh, you know, hey, uh, how does this really affect our our server uh, users, because that's 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 the users in my view. Again, I'm talking uh, production professional deployments here. And the last thing I kind of want to touch on is um, I don't want to be too serious about it, but uh, FreeBSD in our in my personal view is a bit of a shibboleth, and uh, that you know a shibboleth is a word a pronunciation that distinguishes uh, one group of people. Um, or class of people from another. I've personally found as a hiring manager, um, people that are that know and good uh, and are good at FreeBSD are generally, uh, they know and are good at a lot of other things. Um, and, and that includes Linux. And again, it gets back into why we're a FreeBSD shop that does a lot of Linux. Um, I've definitely personally seen that we at A-Team Systems have a 100% success rate uh, from hiring of the free BSD jobs mailing list. Um, there's a great community and a, a lot of great uh, people in it, uh, in the project itself, um, but also using it. Um, and uh, yeah, that's great for our business and uh, it lets us advance the project. <laughs> uh, thank you everyone for uh, coming to my talk. Um, I hope uh, people are awake still uh, and uh, yeah. Don't hesitate to, uh, to reach out to me. Uh, my contact information is here. Um, I, I love talking about FreeBSD. Uh, it's what I do uh, most of the day here, either directly or indirectly to customers. Um, and if you are looking for Linux and FreeBSD support, don't hesitate to reach out to us too as well. Uh, we're always happy to talk. Um, thank you. This is my first talk. So I hope, uh, I hope you got something out of it. And uh, I don't know, Ed uh, or John, if there's time for Q&A. Uh, but we can uh, take it from there. Well, I'm looking at, at the moment. I don't think we have any specific questions. We certainly had a lot of discussion on IRC. Um, oh, so, hey, I'm not on the I'm not on IRC. That's, that's I, uh, is that yeah, where the it, fire it, got lit? Talk, I think was adequately that you achieved your goal in that. So you definitely sparked some conversation and some <laughs> opinions, I think. Um, but that, that was a good talk. Thank you. Um, so far, I haven't seen any questions. I'll give another minute or so just to see if any pop up. Yeah. Okay, so I guess I will say the biggest 
one of the biggest things that came up is that FreeBSD developers are happy using FreeBSD desktops. Um, and that was yeah, great. absolutely. I mean, I, 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 on IRC, even I try to talk about that. I, I think, you know, there's a, I think what you were trying to talk about is, you know, you're not necessarily targeting, but there's a, there's a kind of range of developers that you talk about for when different desktops make sense. Um, uh, someone who's experienced and happy using a Unix desktop, even on Linux, will probably be mostly happy even using a FreeBSD desktop. Um, but there's different folks, uh, you know, like for my parents, what I would tell them to use is a Mac. I, I, I've, you know, exactly. My, I, my wife tried to use KDE for a while on FreeBSD and she didn't really like it. And quite honestly, she probably wouldn't like KDE on Linux either. So, you know. Right. And then, she, and then she's going exactly. to have a negative view of, of it. <laughs> Well, she mostly does it because that's how I get to eat and how she gets to, you know, our family's provided for, but. <laughs> fair, en fair enough, fair enough. But yes, I will definitely uh, acquiesce to, uh, I mean, I used to run FreeBSD on the desktop. Um, I do too much gaming now for that, but um, <laughs> yes, I, I, I don't want to say you can't do it and that you shouldn't do it. It's, um, yeah, just again, kind of know the audience. And yeah, if you're a developer, like you said, and you're used to running X11 and you're okay, Course around with some drivers every now and then, that's great. Um, but, you know, if you are, you know, a single person IT, uh, you know, staff for your company, rolling that out on your desktop and then you being the gatekeeper of your company's productivity because of that might not be a great position to put yourself in, I think was kind of my point. Yeah. But aside from that, I don't think we have any other questions. That that was kind of the, one of the big topics that came up in the discussion. But certainly, we weren't sleeping. We, we were definitely there was a lot of good. Time. All right, all right, yeah. yeah. I I didn't mention system D, so you know. <laughs> I think it inspire a whole other level of, of discussion. Um, yeah, I I really struggle to trim this down. So yeah, I figure that's a good one. I'll just join the the IRC channel and get into it after this. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you very much for your talk. And I think we probably have time now. Uh, we'll go ahead and do another break for about five minutes or so. And I think our talk when we come back after that is Ed Mast is going to be talking about uh, the technical roadmap of the FreeBSD Foundation and some details of that. Thank you. Awesome. Thank hey, you thanks,